Hey guys, what's going on? It's Doconic here, and today we're going to be talking about the Blue Stone and which card you may want to choose if you choose to get the pack. Alright, so real quick, let's talk about it. First off, the Blue Stone, you need to purchase a Dragonstone pack in order to attain it. It is not given to you for free. At this point in time, the time of this recording, we do not know what stone pack it's going to be available on. The JP side, when it came out, the blue stone was available for the largest pack and gave you 100 stones and the blue stone to choose a 70% leader. The, the, on the global side, we believe, we don't know, but we believe that you're going to get the blue stone available with the second largest pack. And it's going to be rounded up to 77 stones. We believe it's the second largest, but we know it's going to be 77 stones. And you get the blue stone with it. So, what is the blue stone? Well, the blue stone allows you to choose a 70% lead. What is a 70% lead? Well, a 70% lead, if you don't know, it is insert attribute type here, key plus three HP attack and uh, HP attack and defense plus seventy percent. So that means is they are super viable, they are super relevant. This is the current meta of the game, which is being changed right now with the Super Saiyan Force coming out. So why would you want to get them? You may ask. Well, majority of them are actually super viable on their respective mono super mono extreme teams. You may want to get them. If you, especially there's like two of them that are really super viable that you're going to want to get, especially if you're running a Mono Heroes and a Mono, mono Villains team. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about it. We're going to go ahead and do a card breakdown real quick, and then we're going to talk about each one and their viability on their teams. Alright, so the first one is Unparalleled Golden Key Super Vegito. A super attack spirit sword causes immense damage, All allies to, and all allies get attack plus 30% for one turn. His passive skill is damage received of normal attacks minus 80% counter with tremendous power. Now that tremendous power counterattack is a 355% increase to his attack as a counter. So you're not getting that plus like a 12 key multiplier or anything like that. You just get a 350% uh, counterattack from his attack that he currently has. Link skills are Golden Warrior, Super Saiyan, Prepared for Battle, Power Bestowed by God, Fused Fighter, Shocking Speed, and Fierce Battle. Max stats are HP of 11,150, attack of 10,840, and defense of 4,225. It's a 12 key multiplier of 150%. And, well, this one doesn't really matter too much, but if you, he still counters if he dodges. Um, next one is Grim Reaper of Death's Rampage, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. He is, super attack is, Super Ghost Kamikaze attack at 9 and 10 key, uh, Charging Ultra Boo Boo Volleyball attack at 11 key, and Super Ghost Kamikaze attack again at 12 key. All of them cause immense damage. The, ultra, the Charging Ultra Boo Boo Volleyball attack massively raises his attack for one turn. That is really, really viable. He does a lot of freaking damage with that at the 11 key. And then the 12 key is just extreme damage to the enemy and greatly lowers defense. Passive skill is attack plus 120% when performing a super attack. So he's, he's a hard hitter. Link skill, Super Saiyan, Fuse Fighter, over in a flash, limit breaking form, the Innocence, and Fierce Battle. Max stats are HP of 9412, attack of 9357, and defense of 4906. Next one is Countdown to Despair, Majin Buu Ultimate Gohan Absorbed. Super attacks are Super Kamehameha at Super Attack Level 1. When you get him to Super Attack Level 5, it's Vice Shout. And when you get him to Super Attack Level 10, it's Super Ghost Kamikaze Attack with a 30% chance to launch that. And when he launches that one, it greatly lowers attack and defense, and he gives himself a huge attack boost. The standard Super Attack 5 to 10, when he's not launching the Super Ghost Kamikaze Attack, just does immense damage and lowers attack and defense. And if you just have him between, let's say, 1, Super Attack 1 and Super Attack 4, he just does immense damage. Now, the thing about him is he has a grindable super attack from his own events. So make sure you grind him out in order to, to uh, increase his super attack. Passive skill for every key or obtained attack plus 12% and recover 3,000 HP. Super viable. Link skills are bad, big bad bosses, metamorphosis, shocking speed, fierce battle, wall standing tall, Majin, and Kamehameha. Max stats are HP of 10, well, 10,017, attack of 9181, and defense of 3999, and he has a 12 key multiplier of 140%. The next one is Eternal Horror Legendary Super Saiyan Broly. His super attack, Omega Blaster, does supreme damage. Passive skill, no mercy, attack plus 7,000, and launch attack, launch an additional super attack when key is 8 or more. So if he's doing a normal attack at key 8, he still launches a super attack after his normal attack. And if he does a super attack, he gets another super attack. Link skills, Harding Grudge, Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Saiyan Lineage, Berserker, Prepare for Battle, and Fierce Battle. Max stats are HP of 10,350, attack of 9,500, and defense of 3,325, and 12 key multiplier of 150%. Last but not least, 
Hopeless minus energy Omega Shenron. Super attack minus energy power ball causes immense damage to the enemy and greatly lowers defense. Passive skill evil domination attack plus 80% and all enemies attack minus 30%. Link skills brutal beatdown, fear and faith, big bad bosses, shocking speed, GT, shadow dragons, and fierce battle. Max stats are HP of 9520, attack of 8803, and defense of 7011. His 12 key multiplier is 150%. So, right off the bat, let's just go ahead and start. I'm going to tell you this right now. The last one that I will ever tell you to get is that Super Saiyan Broly. Why? Because, well, one, if you saw the Redstone video, I would recommend going for the, you know, the Strength one if you're looking for an AoE. But, outside of that, because they will can't be run on the same team, he is outshined by his LR variant. If you have him, great. If not, you know, he may be a little bit more viable if you don't have him, but still. He does Supreme Damage. It's not horrible. If you get a lot of crits on him, if you're looking for a dupe of him, he might do a little bit better on a team. He's not the most viable, though, because he doesn't do a lot of damage. He has a flat-out attack boost, so it's not like he's going to be getting doing any better if you have a core lead. Maybe a little bit because of his attack will get raised, but not that much. The other thing is taking into consideration is the fact that he's going to be run on a core team if you're, getting, if you're thinking about running him on a mono team. I mean, he's the mono leader. The other one would be the Korra, or when we get the LR, that actually comes up the 90% lead for the LR. But even at that point, is he going to be viable? Not really, not in my opinion, I don't think so. The only card that he links well with on a mono-physical team would be the Super Saiyan 3 Broly that Doken awakens from his event. But we're not going to get that for at least another 5 months on the, on the global side, so th that's why I'm kind of kicking him to the side. He still may be viable on a Korra team if you're going for him just because of the damage output, but that's the last one I will ever consider, or at least tell you to consider. He's not even viable on an, a, a mono villains team. That's how bad he is in terms of viableness. I mean, it, it's just not someone I would recommend, guys. I'm not going to even tell you to go for him. He's the last one I will ever tell you to go for at all. Um, now, the, the last two on my list, well, the, the, the th technically the fourth and the third on my list, um are going to be these two, the Hopeless Minus Energy Omega Shenron and the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. Now let's talk about the Omega Shenron first. He is super viable unit. Immense damage, greatly lowers defense. He's really good to have on your um, your villains team if you don't have him, especially if you do, if you already have like a Buhan and you're lacking him. Uh, the thing is that we already have the 90% LR Broly lead, so if you have him, there's no reason for you to have this card. Um, he is not that optimal because most of the really good units, let's say you're running a mixed team, if you have most of the units, I mean, you're not going to really run them because they're mostly gonna, you're mostly going to want to run Saiyans, Super Saiyans, that is. You know, everyone on the Super Saiyan, Super Saiyans on the strength team, they link really well together, even with that Broly there. I mean, Omega is not bad by any means whatsoever, and he's going to be super viable when Shenemba comes out. In terms of who he is, though, as a card, he might be light later on your list. Now let's jump over to the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. This one will be the third one I tell you to go for. He's just damage output, that's all there is to it. Damage output, and he's a viable unit, and he would do very, he does very well on his mono team. Um, that mono team is going to be the Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, if he comes out, the 120 lead. Um, they're both Super Saiyan 3s, you know, they both do very well together, and he is a viable unit. He will be viable in the future, and to some extent he's still a viable, well, not really on the JP side, but he's viable to a certain point on a Heroes team. I would probably say until the the, super, the physical Super Saiyan 3 variant of himself comes out. Um, so that's why he's that. those two are down there. The top two that I'm going to tell you to go for are going to be the Buhan and the Super Vegito, respectively. Now, Buhan, let's talk about him first. The Buhan, because, well, one, he's a key healer. I mean, a key healer. He's a healer with key. So each key sphere, he recovers 3,000 HP. If you're trying to go up against that Super 3 event on be on Boss Rush, you need him. That's all there is to it. Well, I don't want to say 100%, but you would really want to consider running him because of that. He Because of the fact that he heals and because he debuffs the enemy with his super attacks. Super viable. He's just awesome. And he hits really freaking hard. And that with that passive skill of attack plus 12%, that's why people like him. You're giving him, you get, and he's the, the mono intelligence lead. He's just really good. I mean, in terms of his respective leader, I don't know how well he links with that Kid Boo. I'm just not a big fan of that Kid Boo. I never did the research on him. I'm just, I'm really not a big fan of him. Um, they would most likely link well because they're both Majin Boos, so they would most likely link very well and do very well together. Um, 
just take that into consideration. He's more viable for survivability. Survivability is where his key is. You know what I mean? He that's where you would want to go for if you're looking for a mono villains team, or he's just super viable on an intelligence team. Now, the number one card that everyone you know you should know about if you don't is going to be that Super Vegito. He's the best card that you can pick from here. I mean, he's he's just amazing. He hits hard. He counters. He takes almost no damage on normal attacks. And if you get some dupes of him, if you get his defense up, he starts to tank on super attacks. So he's really freaking good. Now, the other thing you might want to take into consideration with Super Vegito is, are you going for Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta? Because if you're going for Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, he is really freaking viable at that point because you want him on that team. Now, unlike, you know, Super Saiyan 4 Goku, that um, Omega Shenron is not going to be able to go onto a Super Saiyan 4 Goku team because he's a villain. I mean, he can. You can put him there. He gets a very small buff. But ideally, you're going to want to play to your strengths. And if you're going to get one of the Super Saiyan 4s, you're going to want to get all Supers. Now, in terms of who's available, that Super Vegito is really freaking good, man. I'm telling you, he hits hard. He's a good defender. He's a good attacker. He counters. He's the number one choice. Well, hands down, number one choice if you do not have him. He is still viable to this day on the JP side. I believe he's still viable on a mono heroes team. If you're running a heroes team, I'm pretty sure this guy's still on your on the list of cards to run because of that defense, the counter, and attack. He's he's an amazing unit, guys. He's the number one. But yeah, that's the order I would recommend, in my opinion. Um, the 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 Super Vegito, then the Buhan, those are your top two. I will go with Super Vegito if you don't have him at all. And then I will go with Buhan if you do have that Super Vegito. Or if you're looking to do, do pass, definitely do the Super Vegito. But um, do that. And if you're going for the Super Saiyan 4, that, that's even more of a reason to go for it. And then after that, um, the next two that would be equal to each other would be the Omega Senron and the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. Um, the Gotenks is just it's a hard hitter. He's amazing. He is really viable on his mono team and on the heroes team. Uh, he does kind of get outshined a little bit by his physical type. But both of them are still really good units. Um, and that Omega, just a damage reduction, and he is a, he's a hard house. He hits really hard as well. Uh, he's also really good on a Mono Villains team for a while. I don't know when he's going to get replaced, but I know he will be, end up getting replaced at some point in the future. So that's why those two are, are still there in the back. But yeah, guys, that's it. I hope that helped you out. That's the rankings that I would suggest. They're all opinion-based, so please don't, make, don't think that this is going to be set in stone. But this is just what I believe and what a lot of the community, I know... The, at least the top two choices that I gave you, a lot of them agree on that. So go ahead, good luck. If you're tr trying to pull on the blue stone, just remember taking into consideration what you have in your box and what kind of team you're trying to build. If you're going for the like, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, they really set them up well because of the blue stone and the red stone. You, get, you can get the Super Vegito and the Super Saiyan 3 Goku card. With those two getting them technical, well, one for free, one for purchasing of a stone pack, but you're guaranteed them. And then you go for the Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. If you get him, I mean, you already have yourself a really good lineup for a mono agility team. Um, in terms of the, the Super Saiyan 4 Goku, not as much. But that's it, guys. Thank you for joining me here today. I hope that was informative. I hope that helped you make a decision. If not, go over onto the Reddit. The Reddit has a really good mega thread about, you know, team building and what cards you should choose. But thank you. Hit that sub button if you're new here, and I'll catch you all in the next video.